So I gotta tell you, I stumbled across these graphic audios, which I was always a fan of the audio dramas as opposed to just a audio book. Now, I don't think it's any secret on this channel that I'm a big fan of books or audiobooks in general, especially for long drives or traffic or mowing the lawn or any, any of those tasks that are just kind of mindless that you don't want to do anyways. Stumbled across Superpowered by Drew Hayes. Now, it was funny because if you go on Audible, all these graphic audios, I think the most I've seen, I think it was for a Brandon Sanderson book, the most you see as far as reviews goes, which goes a long way in telling you if it's any good or not, I think it was like 30 views or something like that. And to be clear, I had come, I had listened to these books in the past and they ranked at some of my top favorite series. I'd listened to the, the whole series, specifically the last book, which is, I think, uh, what is it, 50 hours long or something crazy. So it's one of those series that you can just get lost into. And then it's, for me at least, it's not one of those series that you were just waiting for. Man, I just got to get to the end of this thing. When is this going to end? Is he going to get to the point? Every book has its definite end point. So they're not like constant cliffhangers all the way through to the end. And what's surprising to me is I think Superpowered's Year One, I think was one of the, if I'm not mistaken, one of the earlier books done by Drew Hayes. But it is the book that got me into to his work. Uh, the Superpowered is probably my favorite. Probably the second favorite is the Vampire Account series, which is also really good. And I believe it's ongoing. But anyways, uh, I've been a fan of audio dramas, but they're always they were always hit and miss you'd get the ones done by the bbc and not to say that the bbc does a crappy job but you can't always count on the quality so it's kind of funny i saw this one finally on audible i don't know if they're making a transition i don't know anything else about the company how long they've been around or anything like that but saw a new release for the super powered series Got a little excited, but then I realized, oh, it's just your one being redone. And I'm not saying that the narrator did a bad job for the first book, but for me, I had to listen to it on one point, uh, what is it, one and a half speed or something like that. Not not too too much faster, but a little bit faster. Like I felt like he kind of like you needed to spit it out. Something about his pace just seemed slow to me, so. The other thing too, that's a little bit misleading with Audible is for whatever reason, if you go through the list of releases through the company, uh, Graphic Audio Company, the there's I think there's no more than, I think the maximum one is like 30 reviews, which is usually a bad sign. So forced myself to burn a credit and get the first part. And I think when I got this audiobook, I think it came out in parts, but now you can get the full first book in a single part i think at least the time of recording the second one's going to be coming out in uh, parts as well i think next month or end of this month whatever it happens to be but this is kind of like one of those books for me now that i've got the the full cast audio drama for superpowers um i cannot wait for the next one so now i've backtracked their catalog and i've started snatching up different titles from the company it looks like they have a lot that is still on their website that is not available on audible i don't know how long that's going to take before it makes its way into audible i did go and download their app um to be honest I'm not really crazy about the app itself which is why i just get it through audible just simpler all my titles in one spot huge fan of audible also big fan of podcasts uh, the podcasts are starting to have a lot more of these audio dramas. Or maybe I'm out of touch. I just found one with Wolverine, which is pretty good. But I think I'm getting a little off topic here. So the funny thing is about graphic audio is I'm starting to notice their work done through other publishers. I just got a series also for Judge Dredd. Um, a a little bit overpriced in my opinion. I want to say it was I had to burn a full credit for basically two hours. So $15 for two hours, which is a lot for an audiobook. 
Now I understand that these things take a lot more to produce, but you're only getting two hours of content for fifteen dollars. It's like I might as well, it's like I could go buy a movie. Um, anyways, the Judge Dread ones were done through Penguin Audio, but at the beginning you have the graphic audio intro, so they must have subcontracted them. Starting to find that more and more with different titles that were just done through different I don't know, studios or publishers, whatever you want to call them. But as of yet, the th titles that I've listened to, the Super Powered, I got to say, it's probably my favorite, favorite one so far. Now, I'm not saying I've listened to all of them or even a lot of them, to be, to be honest. But for some reason, the Super Powered ones kind of is in that, uh, it's, it's a, it's, be honest it's a really nerdy book it's basically harry potter but in college but with super powered kids not wizards and all that kind of stuff um so just that alone i was trying to explain to my wife what lander university is and the whole reason and, and this is admitting my nerdiness the whole reason she even asked is because i had a lander university t-shirt which happened to be it's uh my most comfortable t-shirt that i own so it gets worn when I'm having like a, I save it kind of for a rough day because I don't want to get tons of holes in it like my, all my other t-shirts. So I had my Lander t-shirt on. What is Lander College? Well, I had explained to her what the book was. So it's like cats out of the bag. My nerdiness is admitted to the world with this book. I don't know if it's because all the characters are in there are super kind of nerdy. They're not exactly the cool kids in the in the college. Characters are very different. Part of the reason why these types of stories and books, I think, appeal to me is, especially the past couple of years with the news and everything else, the last thing I'm going to want to hear is a Jack Ryan, like a political thriller. We get enough politics and stuff in the news. I'm not going to want to hear anything more about a plague. I think we got enough of that in the news also. Um, and even the dystopian uh, books, which I would love normally i feel like i feel like we're gonna experience it here pretty soon so you get a book like um superpowers where it's just fun characters kind of a kind of light plot it's not really like heavy backstabbing or anything like that just kids kind of try to control their powers and navigate the world and what it would look like in just the world where you had heroes like that almost like the incredibles before they were banned so you've got the super light, I'd say, subject matter with the characters who are not too serious. And you got some, some ones in there like, uh, probably my favorite is still Roy Daniels. Just the complete, pure arrogance of him. But like I said, this is a graphic audio. You have a different character cast by a different actor, voice actor. And the guy that they picked for Roy Daniels, I, I cannot imagine a better voice than the guy that does Roy Daniels. So, not just him though, all of them seem pretty well matched. And it's funny because you hear the different character, or voices I should say, as you listen to these books over and over again. And they must have just a small little studio somewhere with just a few voice actors because you hear them all through the different uh, series, different actors, different parts. It's just kind of funny to me. It's kind of like Saturday Night Live. Everyone plays different characters every week. That being said, I think everyone's really placed well. The the sound effects, the music, everything in the background does not overpower the audio. In my opinion, it enhances the story. My only complaint is I would almost have to go back and re-listen to the first book because I think the first book was somewhere around 26 hours and the graphic audio is just over 16 hours. I don't know if they cut stuff out or if that has to do with Kind of like how, uh, how you take a movie and you take a or take a book and you whittle it down to two hours or three hours or whatever from like a 10 hour audiobook you know instead of telling somebody is doing something you're showing it maybe a little bit of that is shaved off because of the audio so you have an explosion in the background versus saying there's a huge explosion in the background that sort of thing i don't know but 10 hours seems like kind of a lot to shave off i don't know if that has anything to do with the length change i hope they didn't abridge it but again it's been years since i listened to the book um, but even the book 
Uh, like I said, I think the narrator kinda was a little bit slower. I bet you I shaved close to 10 hours off of it just by speeding up the narration. Like I said, not that he did a bad job, I just had to speed it up like a little bit slow. A little bit faster would have been nice. Anyways, graphic audio, I hope they thrive. I hope they get lots and lots of sales because I want them to continue to make this series. There wasn't, I think on Audible, there's only, I think it's in the 30s. Maybe it's more. Let me look. Yep, 106 ratings for the part one. So maybe they are getting a little bit more steam. Hopefully they get through the whole series. Book four, looking at 60 hours. So I think that would be fantastic to get that in a whole graphic audio. But I'm betting it's going to be a while before we get that. What I want you guys think. Comments below. I'll talk to you next time.